Getting started with Windows Movie Maker. You may not actually have it installed on your system, so the first thing you need to do is go online. And what you need to look for is the Windows Live Essentials. Uh, let's go back here. Windows Essentials. So just do a Google search for Windows Movie Maker, and you'll end up getting here. Then if you scroll up, download now. And there we go. Let's just run it. We don't need to save it. Yes, we want to say, yep. And off it goes. Because it'll be different with Windows 10. Um, do I want everything on there? Uh, choose the programs. Don't want OneDrive. Don't want the mail. I should have. I haven't got LiveWriter on there. I should have. Uh, don't need Family Safety. And I certainly don't need Messenger. So we'll just install those two. Yeah, okay. Off it goes. I'll be back as soon as that's installed. So it's installed. Off we go. Is it going to ask me to do anything? Mm, no. Uh, where's the photo gallery? I'm just going to tap Movie Maker in here. There's Movie Maker. Do you agree to terms and conditions? Yes. Bear in mind, this is part of Windows uh, generally anyway. These these are free. If you've got Windows, you've got this product. Um, now, what you can do is you can click here and add videos. Uh, just want to throw something random in here. What's, I don't want any huge files. They would take forever. Uh, yeah, waterfall clip will do. So you can either open it like that. It'll take a few seconds to double check it and check it's compatible, etc. Then you can play it. And another way you can do it, say like you want a video intro that you've had custom made. If I go here, you can just drag and drop. As you can see, that'll take a bit longer because it's bigger than the actual video. Uh, okay, we'll let that load anyway. And you can test that. That works fine. So, so we've got our video, we've got our intro. Now, the other thing you can do is you can add some visual effects. Maybe you want to make it a bit more interesting. Depending on what you're doing with it. All you do is click on it, and that will become that. That's it now. Oops. That video is now that colour. Um, how do you undo it? Let's see. I think you just click on the video and go back to the... There you go. Just go back to the first square, which is blank. But if you want any other effects, just click on them. So that will give you your special effects if you want to add them. Um, what else do you need to know? The next thing you might find useful is transitions or animations, as they're called here. Uh, basically what you've got is, at the moment, we just have a waterfall not doing a lot when we first load it in, but as you can see, as I hover over these, we can have different transition effects. And to, to load one, all you have to do is click on the image that you're interested in, then click on the effect. And you'll see now, if I scroll it back a little bit, as it comes out of the intro and into the video, it drops that straight in there. So we've got our transitions, but where they actually work really well, uh, these aren't going to be the best pictures, so let's try and get three random ones, but they're not the, the main stuff for my uh, channel. But like here, these are all photographs, so or images. So you could actually have different transitions. Click on each one and give them a different transition. So they're all slightly different to make it a bit more interesting. 
you can adjust the speed on the transition if you want it a bit faster. And then if you look at the double click on any image, you can see the set for seven seconds, which is a bit long. So let's drop that down to three. This is the amount of time they're actually showing on the screen, because obviously seven seconds is very long for images. And let's take it back to the start, and you'll see what we've done. Looks, looks a lot, lot better than plain pictures. So that works really well. Um, what's next? So we've, got, we've gone through that, gone through that. Uh, you obviously got rotation. You can rotate your photographs and images. Although it, did, it normally delays on this for some reason. Hang on. Yeah, it's doing it now. When you take an image, it sort of goes away, and as I think, I don't know if it's doing it. Hang on, rotate left. There, see, because it's not the right way round as such, it goes away, and as I think about it, so yeah, that so you can rotate your picture. So if you've got your pictures upside down or whatever, you can correct it in here. Um, what else have we got? Narration. You can record over the top. It's very simple to do. Um, it will use the. See, I, I've got multiple microphones on here, but you just record it and adjust it. I want to load some sound. You, you'll you'll figure this bit out very easily. You just click OK and it'll record it. Um, nothing difficult to do on it. But because I'm using the audio on one, I don't want to use two mics on the same computer. Um, so if you haven't got a fancy title, you can actually just click home screen title. And if you click on the bottom here, you can edit it. Maybe it'll let me. I'm double clicking. See the top one takes me into the video bit, but it's the bottom one I want. And our title is how to use movie maker. Simple as that. Changing the fonts, obviously up here, sizes. You can make it bigger or smaller, so you don't have to be 100% what size it is. If you just think, I just need a little bit bigger, just click that and it will take it up. Bold italic, left alignment, central, right alignment. How long is it going to be on the screen? What background color do you want? It's all there. Um, so let's try and play it. There you go, it, it comes in that way. There are other transition effects as well. If you double click on it, it should come up. There should be more up here. Uh, let's go back to home. Double click on it. Ah, oh, that's it. Go to double click on the text because this is how the text enters the screen. This one's got a bit of a Star Wars effect. Or swings down. There, you go. that's Star Wars effect coming from the sides. All sorts of interesting ways of putting your text onto the screen. And the same goes for, if we go to the home again, my computer's struggling having two graphics pieces of software running at the same time at the minute. Um, but when I go to the home screen, then you can add credits as well. So obviously they go at the end. And they, they're similar, you know, the, the effects same layout, add your text, um, just double click on the text and you can edit it, etc, etc. Very simple, very basic, but does. Now what if you want to add a bit of music? Well, you can just drag and drop, put it where you want it, where it wants to start. So we're going to start at the beginning. And basically, that's it in there. If I press play, there's the music. And you can see why it was the it's been playing up, it's because when I clicked to rotate these things around, it didn't like it. <laughs> um, it can get a little bit buggy if you do things like that, but it should be right now. And the other thing with music, just double click on it. Where you want your start point, end points, it's all in there. You just adjust it. So say I want it to start at one minute. Just put one zero zero. You can see it's just shifted it along. It's as simple as that. And 
that's the basics of producing a very simple movie setup. Um, you can add captions as well, but if you're using YouTube, I recommend doing it on YouTube rather than doing it on here. Um, purely because YouTube will actually generate it for you. Um, although it does have a lot of grammar issues and getting the wrong words, but you can spend 10 minutes, well, probably about half an hour to an hour per video, just correcting it and getting all, but it'll put all the time in there for you. So use YouTube to do that hard bit for you. Um, and what you want to do, if you're still going to work on a movie, you can save it. Now, when it saves it, um, it's not going to publish it. The, see, publishing, it will send it straight up to the internet. It can go direct to YouTube, etc. Doesn't work properly if you've got bad internet. So I always save directly to the PC and I normally go for my computer or HD, depending on what, what the project is. Um, that's the, so that's a completed file. If you want to edit it later, you save the project because it remembers where all your files are. Don't move any of your files because <laughs> it needs them. But this is why if you're doing a video, get a little video folder open, put all your bits and pieces in there, and then use that to do the um, keep everything together um, for later. And it's as simple as that. It, Movie Maker is extremely simple compared to some of the other stuff. But I recommend starting with Movie Maker and moving on as you develop your skills. Thanks for watching.